Streets of New Capenna brought with it a ton of pieces for ramp, so let's test out a Simic build. What is going on everybody and welcome to Simic Ramp. This is my version of the Simic Ramp list. I uh, I worked relatively hard on getting this one together because I do think that uh, Ramp got a lot of new pieces in Streets of New Capenna, some very, very powerful things. We're seeing a lot of those hit the ladders uh, with things like Titan of Industry, uh, Workshop Warchief, all kinds of just really, really good pieces. Uh, and so I wanted to test that out and I made some interesting decisions here. We'll kind of talk through some of those uh, before we jump into the game. So uh, again, a lot of new things. First and foremost, though, we do have Topiary Stomper. This is, I think, one of the the, the best little like three drops of the set. Uh, extraordinarily powerful, 4-4 four, four, Vigilance for three mana. It does have the stipulation that it can't attack or block until you have seven or more lands. Thankfully for this deck, that's not very difficult to get to. Uh, but when it comes into play, you actually go get to fetch up a basic land as well. So we can pull either an island or a forest, uh, whichever we might need in a given situation, uh, to, to help ramp us into that seven uh, lands. So it helps itself, but it also really, really helps the deck. You'll notice there is a landfall sub theme. So we do have Lotus Cobra, we do have Scoot Swarm in here. Uh, and we basically utilize things like Neverwinter Dryad as well as Pondrix Cultivator and then of course the Stomper to pull those basic lands as we so choose. There are different options for the one drop slot here. There's the like one two Reacher that you can tap another creature to add a mana. I prefer this in this particular deck solely because I can sacrifice it. Uh, paying two mana, sure, but you do actually get to uh, sacrifice this, search up a basic forest, and then throw it onto the battlefield. That can trigger a lot of things in the deck, so for me, that felt more important. Uh, we do have some big stuff to ramp into, of course. We've got the Renin 7 on 5, which is pretty easy to get to. Uh, the Workshop Warchief as well is just extraordinarily good. It also gives us some plays uh, later on, which is really nice. Um, but then we do, of course, have things in the top end here that are a little bit bigger and a little bit scarier. So Coma is the first one. Um, really ridiculous card. If you can get Coma down, it's very difficult to deal with Coma. Uh, it's a powerful card because it spits out other 3-3s. Three uh, now, I know there's a lot of sweepers and things like that, but you can sacrifice those to keep Coma around. And then it basically makes it, again, just a repeated effect that you're going to be able to deal with. So very very powerful we do have the titan of industry here this is one of the new big rampy spells from streets of new capenna when it comes in you get to choose two of destroy target artifact or enchantment uh, you gain five life you put a four four uh, rhino warrior onto the battlefield or you put a shield counter on a creature you control really important to know that that's any creature you control so if you're worried about a scoot swarm dying or something like that you can throw it over there uh, if you just want to keep the titan of industry around you can throw it on there so it really sets up a situation where they're gonna have to double up to be able to deal with anything and i i like that a lot uh we do have turn timber symbiosis in here as a two of again it's pretty easy to get to that that seven mana uh and so having this as an option is always good but it also just works as a land drop uh, we do have three storm the festival this gives us plays on uh six mana but it also gives us plays on 10 mana which i love uh there are a lot of things that exile graveyards right now uh, and thinking about like riveteer's charm go blank things like that but uh we're gonna force the opponent to have it so this is great uh this also works relatively well against things like obnixilis because you can still discard this but then play it later uh depending on where you're at in the game so it's not a bad card to just be able to discard uh, for a little bit of interaction, we do have Fading Hope as well as uh, Decisive Denial. We've got a 2 and 3 split here. Decisive Denial works great uh, against a lot of the things that we're seeing in Standard right now, uh, including Obnixilis. You can just counter a non-creature spell, which is great. Uh, a lot of people are trying to rent, or, or bust out that Obnixilis on turn 3. Uh, if you can just counter it that, that turn, then all of a sudden you're in a much better position. Um, and so I really do like that. Fading Hope is nice as well. It's just a little bit of a way to either protect a Scoot Swarm or bounce something on the opponent's turn to, to try and get in for a good attack the next turn. Uh, the last card I will talk about is Sarath the Viper's Fang. I have this in as a, as a two of. Uh, really important card in my opinion because 
A, it gives things untapped creatures you control hexproof, uh, which just means that it really means like sorcery speed removal isn't really going to work. Uh, as long as it's point and shoot removal, of course, if it is a sweeper, then you do have to kind of deal with that. But uh, it is a really good card to kind of stave off a lot of those things. Um, works great with the Stomper as well, because the Stomper has vigilance. Um, this also says tapped creatures you control have death touch. So all these little scoot swarm one ones end up with death touch, which just means that no matter what blocks them, they're going to kill it. So it works really, really well for that. You can also untap a creature or land you control with that last ability. And when you've got big stuff that you're looking to kind of block with or sneak in a block or whatever, a lot of times people forget about that. I know in practice, I've forgotten about it. So it's one of those things that I need to keep an eye on for sure, but it is a very powerful ability. So uh, in the land slot, nothing too crazy. We do have Besiju, we've got Hall, and we've got Lair, but that's really it. We wanted to keep it kind of basic uh, forward because we do have a lot of things that pull out those basic lands. So that's the deck. There's a lot of ways you can play ramp right now. This is a version of it. This is my personal version of it. Uh, I'm still fine tuning it as we're going to go through. We'll probably see some things that aren't perfect, uh, but that's okay. We're going to test it out. Just have some fun today, guys, uh, and hopefully enjoy it. So let's jump right in. Let's see how it goes. Let's hopefully get some wins. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. Uh, very interesting hand here. Very scoot swarm forward, uh, <laughs> to be honest. Do we like it? Uh... I'm going to try it. This really has no ramp element, uh, which isn't great for us, but uh, I think we can at least give it a shot here. We do have a lot of good draws in this deck, so it's not that big of a deal to uh, to get to those. Let's go ahead and play Hall. We just pass here. Unfortunately, it looks like we are going to be up against the mono green Stompy list, uh, so we are going to need to kind of get some stuff down pretty quickly here. Uh, sure. Oops, there we go. Um, all right. This may be a situation where we just lose like immediately because we don't have a good draw for this. Um, and that's okay. It is what it is. Uh, we truthfully shouldn't have kept this hand anyway, so I'm not that upset by it. I'll try and kill this. Um, I'll block all day in the early turns of the game here because there's not really a reason not to. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so we play that, play land, we play Scoot Swarm. That's not terrible, but not great either. Um, though they didn't fight off the Scoot Swarm last turn, so I'm actually kind of inclined to do this. So let's let's give it a shot here. Uh, we'll throw green out. We'll just throw the uh, Scoot Swarm down. This is a bit of a risky play again. If they do just have a fight spell, they can just fight off the, the Scoot Swarm or the Lotus Cobra for that matter. But um, I'm, I'm betting they don't have it personally. Um, so there is a reasonable interesting they decide to throw it on the old growth troll uh i kind of would have done the werewolf pack leader but part of me really wants to double block the werewolf pack leader we do have to keep ourselves in the game uh and i kind of think this is the way to do it that's a little little ambitious for sure but uh i kind of like it um okay so we can ren or we can workshop war chief i think i actually like the war chief here the reason being, this gains us a little bit of life. They are going to have to throw a counter here. Uh, and then when this dies, we just get a 4-4 four, four anyway. So, like, we can kind of do whatever we need to do here. Wow, that's very good. Okay. Um, we're not in a great position. There's no doubt about that. So, let's see what happens. They are going to attack in with the uh, wolf as well. So, I think they put one on each. Yeah. So we are going to block here. We'll take the six, but we're getting rid of at least something. Again, we're just trying to trade as much as we can in these early turns until we can get something big. Uh, unfortunately, we're not really getting what we need to get. Um, we can go ahead and do this, which is something, uh, but it's not great. And again, we kind of just have to wait and see what happens. Um, Part of me thinks we end up double blocking the old growth troll, and I hate that. <laughs> uh, old growth troll is a very annoying card for these kinds of decks, but I do think that might just have to be the out. Uh, so they do get a counter, and they do get to Blizzard Brawl. Wow, that's so good. Oh, man, that really is devastating. Um, I think that might be game. That's so bad. Yeah, that's so good. Wow. So, 
block four, but I think that's game. Yeah, that was really, really a good pickup off of that. Uh, oh, wow, that sucks. All right, that's okay, though. You know what? That, that was a rough matchup. Again, we kept a really bad hand against that as well. So let's jump into game two. Let's hope for a little bit better. What's up, guys? Before we jump into the next game, I just want to remind you, if you would like to pick up this month's Patreon rewards, feel free to do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. Uh, how do we feel about this? Interesting. We do have the Neverwinter Dryads here that we can get down, uh, which can help ramp us into more ramp. And we do have a coma. I'm going to try. Again, this might be a bit of a sketchy keep, but I do love the fact that we can go ahead and get this down turn one. Um, this is always one of those cards where like the opponent probably isn't going to remove it, because why would they? Um, oh, nice. Okay, cool. Land is very good. Uh, let's play this. Let's offer up the trade. I highly doubt they take it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Cool. Um... And I think we actually just leave this up because then the the next play is either this or this. So that seems pretty good. All right, let's go ahead and activate this. Um, grab that basic forest. The ramping here is working pretty well. Uh, so I'm okay with this. And then again, the cultivator can come down and I think that is probably the better play. Yeah, let's go ahead and drop that. Uh, we're just trying to ramp ourselves as much as we can here, so I feel like this is probably for the best. We actually can drop the uh, Dryad as well, which is kind of cool. Um, one thing to note, let's see, one, two, so we do have the two blue there. We also have those, so we're getting there. Excellent. Fable is a very good card. We do need to kind of deal with this at some point. We have the Decisive Denial to do that, so that's helpful. Um, we can even drop Serith. If we get a land, we can drop Serith, attack, and then Decisive Denial. <laughs> uh, at that point, the creatures have Death Touch. <laughs> so, can get a little little rude uh, pretty quickly with that. Interesting they threw the Trample on the... Uh... What? Really? About to say, uh, sure, that's fine. Uh, very curious to see how this goes. Uh, that they were considering an attack is a bit, a bit interesting. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. So we're still two away from coma, but that's okay. I mean, we're we're getting there. We do have the Neverwinter Dryad that can help us get to uh, the sixth land if we don't draw one. So that'll help. I'm curious as to what we're waiting on. Hmm. Anyway, guys, uh, <laughs> one thing to note, if you have it. Okay, there we go. <laughs> that was weird. All right. So if we do this, we don't have enough lands to, to do anything. We can go and preemptively do this, which I actually kind of like. Um, I will go ahead and fight off the, the visitor as well seems more important um i'm just not gonna attack bit of an unexciting <laughs> uh turn there but i think we do need to get the visitor off the field before they keep ramping uh or buffing up their creatures that much more um it's just not one of those things i want to have to deal with and that's a problem card so uh opponent playing very slowly i was gonna mention though as the opponent is considering if they want to discard and draw. Uh, if you haven't listened to the Glorious Sunrise podcast, that is a new venture between myself and Country Fried. Uh, if you don't know who Country Fried is, you should by now, but uh, we've had a blast doing that podcast. We're doing it every Monday. Uh, that's releasing at 6 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, so do keep that in mind. Um, it's available on Spotify, here on YouTube, and in the Apple Podcast app. So no matter what podcast uh, source you might uh, you might prefer, you should be able to find it. Um, and we've had a blast with that, guys. It's an absolute just amazing thing to be able to do that. Uh, we've really had a fun time with it. And uh, a new episode is recorded and coming out on Monday. So we're talking about the most surprising cards from Streets of New Capenna. 
And what I mean by that are cards that we expected maybe one thing and it didn't necessarily end up being the same thing uh, or what we expected. And so it's been a it's been a treat to, to record that and have some fun with that. So highly, highly recommend checking that out. Um, I'm just going to spit out the Ren token, I think. This should guarantee us the lands we need next turn as well. So like... That's fine. I will attack in too. I think we do want to be a bit aggressive here because eventually they just go crazy uh, and I'm not super interested in sticking around for that. I do kind of just want to get to coma. I don't know that they can do much once that's on the field. They do have trample on some things, um, in particular the Kami of Transients, but I'm assuming the opponent disconnected. Um, that seems to be a reasonable explanation, or they just don't know what they're doing. I don't know. But either way, it's been a couple of weird games. Uh, I do hope everybody is enjoying Streets of New Capenna, though. This set has been a blast so far. Um, and my hope is, truthfully, because here's my thing. Kamigawa got a little stale. I'm hoping this doesn't, just because there's so much flexibility, especially in the land position and that kind of thing, that... We get to see a lot more stuff uh, or different versions of the deck. As an example, you know, Simic Ramp is a ramp deck, but there are plenty of other ways you can build a ramp deck right now. Whereas I think prior uh, to Streets of New Capenna, it was pretty clear that there was a correct way to build a ramp deck or at least like a basic color combination that was always going to be better than some of the others. Uh, whereas I think now you're going to look at more meta reactive decks and so you're going to see for a while maybe Simic Ramp is the best one, may not be, um, but there are other options out there that you can ramp into some different stuff with different color combinations and the flexibility in the land slot. So you've got the, the support you need to kind of jump into different colors. That's something we mention a lot on the podcast because um, it's an important piece right now and I think that'll help keep the, keep the uh, standard environment a little less stale. Uh, which is important. Yeah, opponent must have disconnected, but we got the win, so I'll take it. That was a weird, weird, weird game. But uh, let's move on to game three, guys. Let's see how we do. All right, guys, here we are for game number three. This is a sketchy hand. Um, I think I mulliganed that. Oh, this is worse. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think we mulliganed that as well. Uh, weirdly, I will keep this. I don't love it, but we will keep it. Uh, unfortunately, I do think we have to put the two bigger things back, which is less than ideal, but uh, this does help us get to the Topiary Stomper, which is going to deck thin us a little bit, and we at least have some interaction to, to deal with something here, so I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I don't have high hopes. Um, we'll go ahead and pass in the hopes that we can uh, use this ability. Interesting. All right. So let's go ahead and do this because it's not going to be able to attack in. This gives us the double green we need for the Stomper, which is great. Um, it's not bad either, actually. Yeah, okay. So we'll Topiary Stomper. We will grab, uh, I guess, the third green since we do have the blue source already. Um... I'm actually going to go ahead and scry here, too. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. This is a land, but I actually don't think we want that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to toss it back. That might have been a bad call because we could have scoot swarmed into the land, but I think there are much better draws than turn timber symbiosis, so kind of okay. And there is one of them. Um, yeah, that's super good. Uh, let's just um, minus three here. Not sure that that's the best play, but I think uh, it opens up a lot of doors for us, and it does give us a blocker here as well, which I think is pretty important. Um, would love to hit the plus on this next turn if we can. That would be really helpful. That's fine. Doesn't really matter. All right, six. So let's do this. Hopefully get something. <laughs> All right, three lands. That's pretty good. Uh, Alright, so we'll throw Scoot Swarm down. We will throw Green Source down. Um, the question is, do we attack here? I actually... 
I don't really want to risk the... I I'm going to do it. If they want to double block, they can, but I don't think that's a good call. And we got to get them pressured here, I think, as quickly as we can. Uh, this is just going to continue to go up and up, so I fully expect that this is just going to be a problem card for us. Um, but we can't do that much about it. We do have the Titan of Industry, which is helpful. We may have to sack Ren, but I'm hoping not. So they can activate this, uh, give it haste with this, and then get the attack in, which is super good. Yeah, for sure. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're land away from being able to block with the Topiary Stomper. Uh, I think we just let all this kill Ren. I don't think we, we block. Uh, we get to go really wide next turn, so this seems like a pretty easy don't worry about it. <laughs> um... Wow, we can really go wide, but I actually think if we do this, if we do this, um, we'll destroy, and I think we actually put a shield counter on the token, perhaps? Yeah, that seems fine. And then we can attack with these two. So, smart play, I think, it for them is to block here, yeah. But we still get some damage in. And now, I mean, we're hitting on a very wide axis at this point. So they could have something. I don't know. But the Titan of Industry having Trample is pretty relevant. We're still sitting pretty good at 20. Okay. They had to take two to do that. It's fine. Um, next turn, we can double trigger the Scoot Swarms because we've got land plus Cultivator. And we just have a 7-7. Seven, seven. <laughs> Uh, Alright, yeah, Omnixilis, very good. So, the normal play, yeah, is for them to minus one and then plus the other. Um, I'm just going to decline because I don't particularly care about the two life. Um, sure. That's all fine. But they pass through the attack phase, which is great. Um, so, we'll play this just because it's the land they know about. We'll play Cultivator. Wish this had Trample. That's like the only downside to this, I feel. Uh, we'll get a blue source. It doesn't really matter here. That triggers all the Scoot Swarms. <laughs> uh, okay, so. That alone is a lethal attack. Um, I think we just don't worry about... I mean, we can do this and try and force the issue on one of these. But I kind of don't love the play there. Oh. All right, sick. We did it. Yeah. <laughs> that was weird. Um, all right, cool. Uh, well, let's talk about this. We did it. All right, so two out of three is not bad. Again, I think we kept a really rough hand in that first matchup uh, against the deck. I think we really should have maybe mulliganed. <laughs> um, but on that last game, we mulled to five and still were able to pick up a win against a very, I mean, uh, oppressive deck. That that uh, Riveteers or Judd deck is a very scary one. Um, that was a bit of a different version than the one that I created, but I really like that one uh, with the uh, the treasure token creation on the market, whatever it is. So very sick uh, couple of matches there, but Simic Ramp, man, just taking the wins. It's a powerful deck. My thing is with, with the format as it is right now, it feels like every single play that you have has to be a powerful one. Uh, and ramp decks in general have very powerful plays and sure there's some one drops in there that aren't necessarily going to impact the board late game but in general you've got a lot of really powerful stuff that you can do and with storm the festival right now especially you've got multiple axes that you can attack on so for me this is just a really easy deck to throw together and get some wins um it's not going to always win, of course, but I think it's a very, very good solid start to this. I'm interested to try some different color combinations with Ramp. Again, I think there's a lot of flexibility there, but overall, I like the Simic version. I thought this was really nice. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like, leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you are not already, and I'll talk to you guys again very soon. Thanks for watching.